Okay, so I hereby call this special meeting of the Willington Board of Education to order. It is Wednesday, January 16th, 2019 at 6.07 p.m. Um, and the first thing we always have on our agenda is time to hear from the public, to have public input. So we'd love to have you uh, give us your thoughts. Um, we ask only that you sign in so we can get the spelling of your name. But when you um, are ready to speak, if you would stand and also tell us where you live or your connection to the school, that would be useful to us. So, is there anybody present to speak? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> um, we, we, because we take public participation so seriously, we also have time at the end of the agenda. If you are persistent, you can be rewarded with time to speak at the end of the agenda, too. Mm -hmm. So, or we're going to be here again next Wednesday. So, we welcome you all. So moving on to number three, following up to the presentation um, for programs one and two. So we're going to revisit a little bit for Senator Hall before we move on. Yep, and I had some, you had asked some questions, and so I wanted to make sure I answered uh, some of the questions that you had asked. And some of them were program one and two related, and some of them were overall. Mm -hmm. And so first, Donna called me, thank you. As I was reading a line on my budget uh, sheet last Wednesday, I stated that the increase for benefits was 58369 That was actually the line above. The increase for benefits um, is actually 200000 That was where? The, so I read that the increase for benefits was $58,369. For, for what? For all of um, no, it was for benefits in general. It was in the general spreadsheet. I was just giving some general information. Okay. So that was actually the increase uh, for system-wide for IT. That's where the, what the increase was, and we'll get to that today. But I wanted to make sure uh, I corrected that, and thanks to Donna for catching that. So the increase in benefits is currently $200,241. And you'll see, you'll see that... Um, on your papers. So, the handout I gave you tonight, I gave you two. One is uh, the budget workshop responses. This will be posted on our website uh, after the meeting. Um, and so the first thing is there, what percentage of the budget is contractual? You were asking about what do we basically have of control over? And what's contractual and you really don't have a lot of control over? It. And so salaries makes up for 56% of the budget. Benefits makes up for 17 of the budget. Purchase services is 23%. And the purchase services is a balance of things. I, I did not break this out because there, there are some things in purchase services that are not contractual, but $20,000 is not going to make a difference when your um, contractual total is $8,300,000. Does that make sense? I wasn't going to go into that detail and pull things out. It was just it was, it's a snapshot for you. The supplies and textbooks are um, those are things that are not contractual and so that's 2.29 percent of the budget $195,000 so when you think about what I cut already that's what brought that number down to that and there's it's just not a big portion of the budget that you have control over as far as um, things that are not contractual and then the other principal supplies printing DOE dues that, and the other is just a category of how uh, Donna and I, when she does the budget, we put it into those areas, salaries, benefits, purchase services, supplies, textbooks, and other. And those are the things that fall in the other. There are a few things in other that are contractual, that are contractual. And so that is uh, contractual items, conferences for administrators, uh, memberships to things, travel. Those are in contracts already. So they kind of balance each other out. Actually. Exactly. That's why when we looked at it, it's about 15 to 20 each, and they balance each other out. So I wanted to give you a sense that in the grand scheme of this budget, you're probably looking at a max of 3% that you really, when you start to cut things or move things, without getting into contractual items, that's what you're looking at. It's not a big number. So are these numbers, the 195, um, 861, is that what's in the budget this year? That is correct. Okay. So if you add all those up, that would be the budget total. 
and you for the current year, not in the proposal. No, no, no. This is the proposal. This is the proposal. This is yes. You want to know what percentage of that is in next year's budget? This is if you add them up, it's a hundred percent. If you add it up, it's the the total budget that is in my proposal. Question two was um, there was some conversation about the mill rate. And um, I, I tried to pull the facts for you. So we, we got the mill rate for the last 11 years. That's what you're looking at. Um, so you can see what the mill rate looks like at this point in time. The third item there is what is the increase, decrease? You want to know by program and the general reason, reasoning for the increase and decrease. And when I say general, it is general because some things went up and some things went down, even though it might still be a decrease. So you can see center school went down, hall school went down, special education went up, transportation went up, hall services went up, curriculum and staff development went down. You can see that right down the line. And then next to it, try to just write in, hey, we had a retirement and there was a reduction in supplies. That's for center school. That's why there's a decrease. Um, when you see the decrease in hall school, we eliminated, you know, I eliminated two positions in that, uh, in program two. So I want, it gives you a snapshot, and hopefully that, and then Steph, I think it was you that was asking for this in ants, hopefully this gives you a better sense of where the number, what it looks like um, by program if it's up or down. Questions on that? The last thing that's on there, what stipends are paid out and what do they support? And so stipends are really broken into four categories, coaches, extracurricular activities, staff development, and maintenance. And so I tried to give you a snapshot. And I also think you have in your handout the uh, stipend. That is the stipend page straight out of the contract. That's what's in the contract, that page. And so the amount we pay out, and some of those you have to remember when you see that one page that comes out of the contract, that's what we pay one person. Sometimes there's more than one person for a position, depending on what the position is. So coaching stipends, we pay about $10,000 in the support of programs. Extracurricular, extracurricular um, is about 12,000. Staff development, which is um, team leaders, curriculum chairs, and resource teachers, is about 33,000. And, and the maintenance stipend uh, is 12,000. I want to speak specifically um, to the staff development stipends the curriculum chairs, team leaders, and resource teachers, we get a ton of work out of those people for that amount of money. It is, it's contractual. I do have the ability to, um, you know, it's, it's superintendent discretion, I think is how the contract is worded, to fill those, but I will tell you is that if you hire a curriculum chair for, in a district, it's usually a close to administrator's pay. So we don't have that. We don't have that for anything. So the money we're, um, utilizing here, you're applying to those positions is critical to what you do in your schools. Um, the team leader position is critical to communication, it's critical to curriculum and how they, they work across grade level, it's how they make school-based decisions. Um, and then the maintenance stipend, I want to speak to that too because that stipend, we don't have a maintenance facilities director. Most districts do. Sometimes I wear that hat and I rely on the two maintenance custodians for a lot of information in, in after hours. So they work beyond their contract. All the stipends are beyond contracted hours for what's in the teacher's contract for, you know, their debt. And you said that the stipends, uh, the contract are somewhere in here? The There's another page that says Appendix B at the top. It was one of the handouts from today. Oh, from today. Yeah. That's from the back of the contract. That's Appendix B from the teacher's contract. So hopefully that gives you a little more information um, regarding, you were asking about answers to questions. And if you have further questions you want more details on, you know, obviously I just make a list and, and pull them together. So I made... Actually, that's an old one. Sorry, so, so those stipends... They are in the proposed budget? Yes, they are in the proposed budget, correct. And that's where we, you have flexibility. You don't, we don't have flexibility with contracts except this, this part. Correct. You could, and I'm, I'm going to say not you, I could choose not to fill those positions, 
but it would greatly impact I know, I what we are doing. Correct. The, the amount of yeah. the, the dollars is by contract. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. The stipend yes. amount is by contract. Correct. So could you just clarify, because I may have missed this or forgotten, sure. what the system-wide support, what that 58,000 for ID is? Um, we're going to get to it today. Oh, I'll show you. Then I yep. haven't forgotten anything. No, you haven't forgotten the program today. Okay. The other handout I gave you is, because uh, I know it's going to come up at some point, is people always want to know what's our per pupil expenditure. Uh, you know, this is something that, I'm going to be honest, I don't, I put value in, but I don't put a lot of value in. And the reason why is because we could add 40 students and it wouldn't impact our staffing at all. If they were spread out, we could add probably even more than that. Um, and you wouldn't have to hire anybody. Your, your pupil would go down and you look like you're saving money. You're not. So it's the same amount. But what you, why I highlighted some, those are all the school districts that are under 500. So I tried to give you, it, it's hard to compare when you start looking at, you know, Mansfield's 1,100. I mean, hey, their per pupil is 20,000. I'm, I'm glad to compare it to what we are. Um, but it is a bigger district. And so I tried to give you, I highlighted the groups that are uh, 500 or under. And this actually was hot off the press. Donna gave me the numbers today, and then Gary Mala from East Con emailed me this afternoon, and this was in there. So those are brand new. Any questions about any of the handouts? Um, anything from Program 1 and 2? Any other questions or data you want me to gather before I move on? These figures are for the uh, stipends and so forth. They're, they're not rounded off, so let's just say. Yeah, it's not exactly $12,000. It's not exactly $12,000. Yeah. The, the exact number is based upon the contract that exactly what you have on that sheet there next to you. And do we usually fill those positions completely? In other words, we appropriate that much money, but in the staff development for uh, we have 33, do we spend 33 or Yes, or yeah, I think um, Donna said we had $54,000, I think was the total in this, my proposed budget, mm -hmm. um, that is applied to all of the stipend positions, yeah. so coaches, um, all of the items. Where you will see some differences, and, and actually, you know, um, Michelle just pointed out the cheerleader stipend should be higher. This must be in, yeah, it's actually, high, it's in 19, the next contract. Oh, it's, it's not current. Right, right. Okay. Okay. It, it's the next one. You're looking at yeah, the 18, 19 rates. Okay. These actually went up, I think, 1%. Yeah, that's, that's a cheerleader, right? Right, and the cheerleader um, made an equivalent to other coach. Made an equivalent to a coach. Right. Yeah, I so, thought about <laughs> the, and so, you know, depending on the number of clubs that are run, we may run more clubs one year and, and less clubs. It just depends on student interest and, and we go. Sorry, I stole your paper. But yes, to answer your question, Herb, we do fill the majority of those positions. Yes. And the what we get out of it is, is tremendous. I would say we're at almost every dollar. I have to recalculate it. That's okay. Okay. Any questions about any of those handouts? No, the enrichment program, that was not part of the stipend. Correct. With those. Separate. Separate. Correct. No questions? No. Okay, so then we'll move on to number four program review, starting with special education. Okay. You have um, a snapshot in the back. This is one of those programs I think it's important to have some background on. So if you go to Appendix C, it gives you a snapshot of, it's very similar to last year, um, but it, this doesn't change. So it gives you a snapshot of what special education looks like, what it looks like in Willington, um, and it gives you a, a, a sense of, you know, when you hear the word purchase services or related services, what does that mean? And, you know, what's a BCBA? Uh, so you have some information there in Appendix C. You also have more information because there's several um, special education grants. 
if you turn one more to Appendix D, that also gives you an outline of what those grants are, the IDEA grant um, and excess costs. And we're, those are things we're going to talk about today. Now, those grants are the grants in the special ed, well, they're not a lot of special ed, but generally, are they in addition to the figures that we have? Good question. No, the they are. Or is it? It's an offset, and you'll see it on the second page. So I'll show you on the second page. Okay. Okay, so we just hired Marsha. Marsha's the new Computer Services Director, so we have one administrator, um, and the administrator does all of the, the parent meetings for special education. Uh, there are a lot. I think our current number is 70 students identified. And um, if you go down the list, you see 9.27 teachers certified. And then it says certified preschool teacher. The reason why that says eight hundredths is because that's paid for out of the grants. So if you add up the 927, 08, and 65, we have a total of 10 special ed teachers. It's just broken out because they are paid for through grants. Okay? Secretaries. So our population is at 72. 70 students currently oh, identified. And that. About 16% of our department. No, sorry, 16% of our school population. I think it's higher than that. But higher than yeah. 17%. Yeah. 76, yeah. And, I mean, I've already talked to Marsha about this. That one thing coming as a new director is you're looking at everything, you're looking at how we identify students. Are we able to dismiss some students out of special education, which is obviously your ultimate goal? Um, but we are, those are things that she's going to be evaluating. Not in her first two weeks, though. <laughs> right? Although it's something that's always on my mind. Yes. <laughs> um, secretaries, you see 1.25. And the 0.25 is Joan at Center School because Penny does it all for all school, for all scheduling, and Joan does all the scheduling at Center School. So there's a portion of her there. Paraprofessionals, you see 23 total, 22 plus the one. The one is a grant. There are 12 paraprofessionals at Center School, and there are 11 at Hall School. All of those paraprofessionals, it is dictated by IEP. The student's individualized education plan says <coughs> they need support, or some, sometimes it's in groups. Sometimes it's one-to-one, -one, depending on their needs, and it's done within the meeting, and you have to legally um, provide that support. Okay? No, so... No, the, uh, the parents will not afford... I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Give me one second, and I'll tell you why. Um, the administrator came down because Marsha's here, and she's actually, actually working fewer days, so we saved some money there than Holly worked. Um, the teachers, the certified line went up, and the reason it went up is because obviously the salary increase, the contractual increase, but also because we hired a new um, special education teacher over the summer, and the per because someone left, and the person that left had less experience, the person that came in had more experience, and she's dynamite, um, and so that's where the increase comes from. Secretarial is, is strictly contractual. <laughs> paraprofessionals in that salary line item that you see, it, it went up 6000 but this is where it gets a little confusing. We have eight paraprofessionals in the classified union in Willington. That means they are Willington employees, that means we pay benefits, um, they are Willington employees. The remainder of the pair, that and that's what it costs to for those eight paraprofessionals. I'm going to skip down for a second because when you go down to purchase services and you see paraprofessionals down there, those are contracted paraprofessionals. So that means we say that again. The other 14. That is the other 14. Oh, I'm sorry, 15. Uh, whatever it is, 23. Grant. Yes, the other 15, and those are contracted through Eastcon and CREF. We do not pay benefits for those folks. That's a, a contracted rate. I will get to that increase. The increase that you see 
and paraprofessionals down the bottom is significant. And the reason is when you planned this budget last year, you planned on a certain number of paraprofessionals based upon what you knew at that point in time. Now, I think you planned for 18 at that point, you currently have 23. That can always go up and down. So, if it, you know, as Marsha does annual reviews with, with folks and they, and they review student plans, if they can reduce some of the hours for a paraprofessional, they do. If they have to increase because of an increased student need, they have to increase hours. So this is one of those numbers, 23 pairs, where it could go up and it could go down. If I may also add, yeah. if a new student moves into district and they're coming in with an IEP and they have a para in their IEP, then we're required to follow that IEP. So, so even, even beyond that, or if we have new students coming in to, to pre-K who need that support. So it's a variety of different reasons why that number fluctuates often. <laughs> yeah. And that actually, that happened this year. We had a student move in, I think, that had a one-to-one. -one, and we also had a student that was out -based. You just, this is one of those areas where when they, if they come, you have to pay for it. So total is 23. Eight are under the non-classified Willington contract, and 15 are um, CREC and ESCOM. And that's a really good deal. It's a really good deal. Yes. yes. It's built into their, their amounts, but you need things. It is. And we're getting high quality pairs. Yes, we are. Our first questions are great. So, Phil, um, you know, with this handout you gave us tonight that says special ed is up 85,000 because yes. of increased number, how, how does that fit in with what Let we're talking me, about now? Can I get to the end of that? Because it'll, sure. it'll, uh, I'll definitely will show you. Sure. Um, because it balances out over, as I go through the lines, you'll see the balance in a minute. Okay. So you see uh, certified classified subs. This is, you know, when they, someone's out, you need a sub. It's, we left that flat. Purchase services, IEP Direct is the program that we utilize to have all of our individualized education plans in. And it's how we print our reports. I believe it's also how we export reports to the state of Connecticut. Um, it's a critical program. We've been using it for years, and that's the cost. That is one cost that you'll see at the end come out because it's paid for out of the grant. <coughs> um, audiological repairs and maintenance. We have five years in the classroom, and um, you're required to, to do a lot of these things are required. You see a big drop in tuition outplacement of about $130,000. I spoke to this last time, and, and I spoke to this because we have, are expecting at this, at, at this time, <laughs> this day, this moment, that we're going to have two out-of-district placements next year. This is the cost of those two out-of-district placements total. That could change tomorrow. So, when some, if someone moves in, you could add eighty dollars to $100,000 to that number. It just depends on the program, where they're at, and what their needs are. Okay? We have five and four. That's more than 85000 now, of the five, varies. the amount that each student gets varies because the average would be about, about 57000 Correct. It depends so on... The next year, there are two at 153 and that would be probably 76, 75, 76000 yeah. So it's, I don't understand why it's more expensive for two than for five. It's a good question. So. Depending on the facility, we don't dictate the price for the facility. All we can say is the, the best environment for the child, we look at different options, and sometimes it's whoever has slots and openings, but the best place for that child is where you have to send them. Um, and it's not, you know, if you get a residential program per you get a quarter million dollars, easily, if you get a residential program, um, we don't create those prices that what, that what we're building. They do. Is that determined by a PPG? It is. 
it, it all where, where they go. Where, where they go, yes. Yeah. So that that's a factor that you know has to be considered. The other piece too is um, you can send a student two students to the same place, but the cost may be different depending on what level of service they need. Do they need additional related services? Do they need OT, PT? Um, so the cost could be different depending on the student's needs. Same thing with transportation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so these are these prices are. Uh, there's an estimate, really. It's a guess, unless you've already. So what we currently know. Yeah, it's it's what we currently know that no, no. the cost is going to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. But okay. looking at what their program is calling for for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see outside counseling is flat. OT and PT we contract with, they come into our buildings uh, two days a week. And so OT yeah. is occupational therapy, PT is physical therapy. Uh, there's definitions inside your... Okay. Where do we contract them out of? They're actually independent contractors. Uh, and there are several school systems in the area that use the same two people. Um, and we're very happy with their services and they have had minimal, minimal increases. And again, no benefits. We're lucky to have independent contracts. Mm -hmm. No benefits. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about para para professionals already. The next one is uh, behavioral consultant, the BCBA. It's up about $8,000. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to let you know one of the most critical services that we contract out, you're looking at it. A BCBA is a, a basically a behavioralist that comes in and works with our teachers and work, they don't necessarily work directly with students but they they help our teachers work with students and they're helping train students so we can keep them in district. I will tell you we have several students right now um, that are in district because we have invested dollars in the BCBA. Uh, they are contracted out from ESCOM. They're the same folks that Marsha has worked with in other places. The other uh, deal about the BCBA is that one of the BCBAs that we work with, and tell me the levels, like one is an actual BCBA and the other one's... Yeah, you know, their certification, I don't remember. The yeah, test, she's, but... One of them is, is the, the basically what I'll call the full deal, full BCBA, and the other one is, is working under that person, and so they're rated pay, even though that we're getting a really amazing quality, is not as high. This is what has helped us keep students in district. And if those of you that went on the tour today, you saw this in action, and those of you that are going tomorrow, you may see it in action as well. Anything you want to add to that, Marcia? Well, I was most impressed coming here to see the collaboration that we have with this program. I've worked with this program before, and they're phenomenal. Um, the, the piece that excited me the most is they're working so closely with, especially our staff at Center, and almost kind of training them to, to gain these skills. So I feel like this is really a sustainable program for our kids, um, because we will have staff who can use a lot of these skills um, who are excellent at it to begin with. Uh, so this is very exciting for me. Many districts are hiring full-time BCBAs um, within their programs, so I think we have kind of the best of both worlds here, where we can have this, this consultant uh, East County Agency come in, work with our staff, and we're just reaping all the benefits of that. So it's, it's, to me, it's very exciting to be able to collaborate with them. And again, the increase is directly connected to student needs in their IEP. Yeah. So it's, it's helping us maintain students in this room. When they come in, do they come in at your request for a couple of days or? They do. We contract the time with them. Um, so, and I'm still learning so much, and I don't remember the exact amount of time that we have them for. Um, but they come in, they meet with the staff. We're really, they're coming in, they're observing students. So it's very specific on the work that they're doing. But it's definitely based on the students' IEP and the students' needs. Where are they from? East no, from East Con. And it says here half a day per week for 40 weeks. Yeah, I think yes, I put it yes. in the notes, right? Yes, right. Yeah, independent. Yes. Do they bring students with them, too? You only need to sign them. No. 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 You mean students who are learning to be yeah. BCBAs? They, in that program, they actually have doctoral, doctorate students yeah. um, working. Yes, so, so yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a dynamite program. 
Wealth, you see there, is flat. Wealth is run uh, two days a week for 18 weeks. It's an after-school program. I saw, I checked on it today. Um, they have a full room of students that are, do you know how many students are in this year? See, she, we're just growing her and she's only two weeks in. Um, there was a lot, I will tell you there's a lot of kids. Um, so it's an after school program, specifically trying to support students with special education needs. Um, that's something that has been in, in the budget for years. Summer school, it, again, is another legal requirement that you have to provide some sort of uh, services if the PBT agrees to it. And so that's run um, four weeks in the summertime, three days a week, and again, you're, you're looking at 21,000. Evaluations, when, we, when you do testing for special education, you have to pay for the evaluations. They're copyright, they're expensive, and that's what you're looking at um, for evaluation. And I believe we also use some grant money that for evaluations mm -hmm. as well. Transportation costs went down about $40,000, $40, and this is again related to special education transportation. You cannot put it in the other area because it depends by IEP. Some students require um, specialized transportation to get to school, and so we, we pay that bill. And so that's part, you know, anytime you can get that, and we're always Marsha and I have already talked about this, trying to negotiate better deals and find different avenues to still, um, you still have to provide the finding, you know, other avenues. The outplacement of the transportation is included in the outplacement line, or is it included in here? Great question. Don, do you know if that is part of the outplacement transportation as well, or is it in the outplacement number? I, I think it's in this transportation it, line. It's, I believe it's in the transportation line. Yeah, yes. it's outplacement and. Yeah. That's in like But transportation is an extremely high line item, um, and that's something actually that there's been lots of discussions recently, especially within this area. And I believe that a, a, a group is going to be started through EastCon to kind of address this concern about transportation. I've done a lot of research. My past district, which is local. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that, like Phil said, we have been talking about trying to price out transportation in different companies. I've seen that EastCon, who we're currently using, um, has been the cheapest rate, even though it's still, it's just so high. The last well, thing? That's because they have special, right. specially equipped buses. A, a lot of the students will uh, go on vans. Um, so, you know, sometimes you're transporting one student going to one placement, so you have the cost of a driver yeah. and, and then you see the van, it's, it's a high cost. Yeah. Uh, we try to collaborate with these kind as much as possible to do share transportation because that cuts down our cost. If there's other local students you know, going to the same place, we try to share that cost. Um, so we try to be creative and, and EastCon does a pretty good job at trying to help the district's out with that also. <laughs> IEP nurse is exactly that. It's a student with IEP needs that has a nurse. Um, that is the dollar amount that we are estimating we will need for next year. Um, that could go up or down again. So that person travels, that student travels with the nurse. Supplies went down some. Um, Again, it's just like everybody else's supplies, they came down some. Um, other conferences, travel is contractual, dues and fees is contractual, copier maintenance and telephone, you know, is, is basically contractual. And then there was no equipment requested this year, so it was zeroed out. Um, but again, as a reminder, if someone comes in and they need a piece of equipment, you may need to purchase it. So the total expenditures for special education is $2.2 million. This is where the number comes down, Steph. And what you're looking at here, the first one is excess cost grant offset. Last year, Jackie applied $40,000. We are only applying $10,000. Excess cost happens when you have a student that their cost when it reaches four and a half times over your per pupil expenditure, 
the state will reimburse you at about around 70%. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're going to have too many students that are going to exceed that number. So if you were going to do simple math and our per pupil was 20,000, uh, I did actually did the math. Four and a half times is $83,871. Anything over that amount that a student, that, that's what the district is responsible for. Anything over that amount, we can uh, apply for excess cost and we would usually get back about 70%. We're hoping next year we're going to get back about $10,000. So, and we've already said it's going to be tight. Yeah. You would include uh, the outplacements would be. The it is, but if they're, it, right. it, and they could be in district too, depending on what their needs are on transportation and things. Mm -hmm. Probably not, but you don't know. Um, but it, out of district placement, that's what it usually applies to. You know, start talking about spe really specialized transportation, specialized program. You know, if you, I, I mentioned, if you get someone that's, uh, you know, in a facility that is. Uh, an overnight a residential facility, that's where you can start getting some money back. There's a lot of legislation that's being tossed around and looked at around this because the costs are just astronomical. So that, just to go back to the transportation so here on the previous page, is that, that is both for uh, transporting kids into the schools locally and, and also out? Correct. Okay. Yes. And that's where Marsha's comment about if you're transporting a student out of district and Ashford has a student that's also going there and it's all, all through ESCON, they know that and we try to collaborate so we can say, hey, can we share a van? Will it work with those two students? Is it on the same group? And try and save some money that way. The Medicaid, you already know about this because you applied 30000 to this year's budget and we've gotten 1000 and we're 1,000. We, this is what you opted out of because we were not getting the money for the amount of time we were spending on this. This, is, this was a, a, a mandate by the state and now one small district started fighting back on this. They allowed districts to opt out if they were spending more than they were bringing in. We were spending more than we were bringing in. We are opted out so we can't apply any money to that because we don't have it. The IDEA um, we're applying 42,000 to the staffing. Preschool certified, we're applying the same amount, 4,897. IDA classified staff, which is that non-cert um, union, pays for a para, 31,078. And IDA purchase services is that IEP direct 6,000. All of those numbers, we take off the bottom line uh, our total expenditures, <laughs> and it brings the special ed budget line down to two million one hundred eleven thousand six hundred and fifty nine dollars. That's an eighty five thousand dollar increase. Um, the majority of it, I would say, you have to, you have to do it. And again, that number could go up, and that number could go down. Questions about special education? I'm sorry, we can't take questions from the audience until the president is speak, and again, we can't respond to those questions at that time, but we can respond in future meetings or in writing. So for right now, um, the questions are going to be just from the board of okay. I will tell you that we have an amazing special education staff. Amazing. Uh, and okay. Marcia knows when she Second came back. in after <laughs> a day to go, wow, what a group. Both schools, paraprofessionals, the people we contract with, dynamic. No questions? Okay. Program 5, moving along. I have one question. Yes. No, so we, we were talking about the Paris. We have 24, I guess. 23. 23. Mm -hmm. And they're all necessary. In other words, they are assigned to a student or Yes, the, yes, they're all uh, determined necessary through the IEP, through the student's plan. Mm -hmm. They all have very specific roles to work with that student, whether it's working with that student as a one-to-one -one or working with that student for very specific um, support, whether it be in language arts or in math. Um, so it's, it's very mm -hmm. student-centered. Um, 
Um, and you, you might have saw some of that through your walkthrough today, seeing some of those adults in the room and how they were working with those students. And the IEP prevails, so we, we don't have any it does. say in that, do we? It does. That's the committee. It's a legal, yes. Yes. Legal requirements that's made by a, the team, uh, which consists of a special ed teacher, regular ed teacher, administrator, mm -hmm. um, parents are a big part of the team also, yeah. and the related services, uh, counselors and occupational therapists, OTs, so the specialists are in that meeting also. Mm -hmm. okay. Moving on to program five. Health services. We have two nurses, one in each building. You can see their salaries there. It's just a contractual, by the way, this, the nurses are um, classified staff. Union is made up of custodians, nurses, um, our Wilmington paraprofessionals, and some of the administrative assistants secretaries. So it's, it's an interesting union group. But that's a contractual increase there that you see. Conferences, um, I would love to give them $500 to go to a conference, but because of where the budget's at, this is where um, it impacted health services, so I put it to zero, which just means they can't go to a conference. The medical advisor is mandated, There's another $1,600 that we're required to do. Our medical advisor basically uh, is someone that connects out with our nurses <coughs> if there's issues. They also um, can talk about training or, or requirements. Sub-nurses, that's what we uh, budget for the year for substitute nurses. Supplies is just under $4,000. That is for both schools. I left that flat. I, I mean, you need band-aids, you need ice packs, and um, it's not one of those areas where uh, I thought you could bring it down. Uh, they spend that money every year. Audiometer calibration is something that, to do the testing, they need that calibrated. They're required to do the testing. Um, so that's the cost. That's how much that cost. It was $170 to calibrate it. How many did we have two? Uh, I believe so. I think there's one in each building. Each yes. And if not, it's it's whatever's required her. Yeah. Um, and then the membership for the nurses is there, and so is periodicals. Don, did we take that 241 out? That was one of the lines. I think I left it in, which make it, made it 2.94. You said 2.93, yes. right? I left yes. it in right now. I left it in. Okay. Yes, you did. Just confirm. So that is the um, what's there right now for health services. Uh, you know, our two school nurses are busy all day long. And the substitute nurses, that's usually, that's about the right number. Yeah, uh, like we, we went through and looked at absences and looked at what's, you know, what's there. I will tell you, we are so lucky that we have sub-nurses that are reasonable, reasonably priced. We, uh, a few years back, we tried to contract out because we couldn't get nurses here, and we were looking at ready nurse. It was like $400 a day, I want to say. It was super expensive. We have two very good sub-nurses that work for us, that will come in when they need to, and they're not that much. <laughs> they get maybe less than half of that. So, we're lucky. Phil, I had a question about um, supplies yes. uh, being flat. And, and I guess I'm, I'm just kind of wondering about the, the hugely ex expensive sort of emergency stuff like EpiPens, but also the, the uh, antidote to any kind of overdose. I yep. mean, God forbid, but you know, are those things that we're having to do and are they affecting the budget for medical supplies? So, the overdose piece is not in there. We have no policy for it yet. Okay. We would create a policy, and I think we would probably get a grant for that if we did okay. some sort of um, escaping. What are we talking about? Um, I have the process in my head. It's not the process. Narcan. Narcan. Thank you. For <laughs> um, Narcan. We don't have anything, but we we're still looking at grants, and there are opportunities out there for to get that in. Um, but we would need a policy around. And EpiPens are provided by the family. Oh, they are? Okay. Yes. We, I will tell you that both nurses do stock one EpiPen, though, in case there's a child that does not have a known allergy. And so I don't want to tell you that they get one free a year, but I, I believe they get a really discounted 
uh, EpiPen because they stop. I just know this from today because my husband orders um, supplies for, for one of the firehouses that there's a national back order of the junior size EpiPens. That's not, that's happened before. Yeah, so, okay. Publix had the same issue. Yeah. Any questions about health services? Okay, then moving on to program six, final uh, curriculum and staff development. This was, and every area is a priority area. I hate to say that, but this is one of your was your priorities when you think about what we listed and what I put in my letter about small class sizes and professional development and individualized um, programming for students uh, and clubs. Those were really the three. This program really gets to the professional development and instructional support for staff to improve their ability to deliver instruction. Um, and so when you're looking through this, uh, this is when Jackie started this uh, section uh, in 17-18. It was really, there was a lot of money in it and it's really, it's all professional development. Sometimes it's used for subs uh, substitutes, sometimes it's, it's providing uh, time for staff members after hours to write curriculum. Sometimes it's doing a, a special workshop that we need every staff member trained on. Um, sometimes it's materials. And so when you look at support for curriculum leadership, those are specifically, and these are not stipends, this is what we're using to move forward with our curriculum. And it may be, uh, you know, to train teachers on the workshop model. Last year we, we brought someone in for center school around um, doing math workshop. That's where some of this money can, can go. Um, and it also comes out of staff development too. So where you, if you jump down to um, the teacher workshops in-house, that's the internal PD. Those of you that were, did your tour today, you saw that. You saw internal PD going on, you saw a group of three teachers working on curriculum and the cost of subs. And that's worth its weight and gold to be able to do that. The team leader stipends are contractual. That's where you see that um, 30,000 come in. Outside conferences are contractual. That's in the teacher's contract. Paraprofessional workshops is contractual. It's in there. Um, and then the professional development key committee, um, they are the ones that really help drive what we're doing in, in the district. Could be school level, could be uh, district level. Um, they're managing some of the PDs, they're organizing some of the PDs, they're contacting uh, vendors, they do a lot of additional work for us. Um, so those three areas kind of all work together. On subs, you know, if, you, if, if you're going to do math workshop and you need books, you need to buy the books to get in there. So those are the materials that come through. Yeah, um, yes? Is it true right now that in lieu of CEUs, the district is required to provide in-house professional development for the teachers? It's not necessarily in-house, it's that you're supposed to, you know, provide it individualized, number one. It's not supposed to be blanket for everyone unless it applies to everyone. Mm -hmm. But then you're also, you know, supposed to provide um, a variety. And if you don't provide, say we didn't offer any technology related items, we have to send people out to get those items. I don't know that anybody's really tracking that at the state level. Mm -hmm. um, but we're providing, I will tell you that our staff uh, is probably over the last two years has gotten a lot of really critical professional development. Um, and it doesn't always mean that they're going to a conference. Mm -hmm. There are some big districts that spend big bucks. Ellington's, I think, sent almost all their teachers to Readers and Writers Workshop in New York City um, to Columbia University. And it's astronomical, the, the cost. And so, um, and so, we, we couldn't afford to do that, but we find ways to basically kind of train the trainer, train the teacher, train the, uh, two teachers, and they bring things back and share. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where this, again, gets to the, how do you make it work in small town USA where you don't have a curriculum to share, you don't, you know, that's, that's how we do it. We just actually went out for a visit to, um, we paid for subs, and we sent staff members to Ellington, and they had a great visit. And so they're bringing back loads of information. How can we apply it to Willington now um, to improve our instructional practices? Thank you. 
The note you have says the team program costs are being subsidized by the state. Which line do they fall into here? Well, it, it, um, it's a good question. Don, where was that? It was added to team leader stipends. So oh, that's the $2,000. Yes. yes. Okay. See where it came down. Yes. Okay. They had, and we don't have anybody in team, team right now. One said team leader, one said team program, and I wasn't yes. sure it was the same thing. Okay. It's actually both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Other so questions? Is, uh, is the state paying for team? They are. They're, they reinstated it, so okay. now they're paying for it again. We don't have anybody in team right now. Okay. Um, team is the beginner educator program that they get support when they come in. Um, the grant offset that you see there, the Title I was all was applied to salary in Program 1. That's why it's not applied here. And then the grant offset in Title II, uh, $12,000 is a grant for professional development and um, we took the entire balance off of this total expenditure. So there's again another $13,000 off the budget through grants. Questions? <laughs> Was that a team teacher education and mentoring? I thought that was uh, the state wasn't going to pay. They stopped. It. They reinstated. It. They brought it back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They brought it back. So now they're paying for it again. We'll see how long that lasts. We have to go. Yeah. It doesn't impact us right now, but we'll see what happens. So of the of the cuts, I mean, are there what what's the fallout of that? Like the cutting in half the team teacher workshops in house and you know thirty five hundred off the committee. I mean, things that are, what is I'm just trying to get my head around. It. Yeah, what does it actually look like what's in practice? It do? Yeah. So you know, if you think about three teachers. Uh, so if I'm going to look at the teacher workshops in-house, which is something when we have subs, we utilize on a regular basis because we get a lot out of them and there's a lot of collaboration. Figure if you have three teachers in and, and a sub is $85, so you're spending about $250 um, per day through subs. It's, it's not a group. You can still go a long ways with it. Um, and then between schools, it, it's where... Um, I would say where it hurts is it slows down the amount of curriculum that you can ha ask people to do uh, because you know, when you're trying to rewrite science, social studies, LA, and math at the same time, which is what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, it slows down the, the, the amount of work. I will tell you, um, The support for curriculum like leadership line, cutting it down some is reasonable. I don't know if where I have it is is perfect. The teacher workshops is reasonable, I would say, because we also have a sub line that if we got stuck, we could utilize. Um, and we, that time is used really really well. So as an example, they might do a, three teachers in third grade might do a half day of ELA in the morning and then a half day of math in the afternoon. And you know, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and they're always cooked afterwards. Today they had a box of donuts because they knew they were gonna need it. Um, but these are reasonable. I think there, it's, there's not a ton of fallout. It does slow the process down a little bit. Didn't we have an emphasis on it the last two years? We had Yes. Um, and I think we really upped the budget for last year at least and possibly the year before. And maybe we've gotten to a point where it can level out a little bit rather than that emphasis. Yep. I think you know you started at what I'll call forty thousand mm dollars -hmm. a few years ago between three and one of them is teacher workshop in the house, one is professional development committee. Um, and one is support for curriculum leadership. A lot, a lot of work has happened, mm -hmm. and so I don't think there's as, as much. There's still a need for it for for sure, um, but there's not as many hours as. There's also so much work a person can do, extra hours, and to do these things. So, 
we're, we are still on a good course. Any other questions on the curriculum and staff development? So you're saying with, with the curriculum cuts, the events were full budget, that we're going to be able to maintain our programs and professional development and everything that we do relative to curriculum. Yeah, because we're just coming here. I, and, and especially for, because we're creative. I think as soon as we, we gave ourselves permission to bring subs in and do a lot in house and get a team together, we've accomplished a lot. Uh, there are some things where you have to go out and sometimes it takes time to do <coughs> that. But this is, yes, I, 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 this is, it, it's going to keep us moving forward. It still matches our priorities. There's still quite a bit of money in there. Um, so when is, when, is the, when is the staff going to have time to work on a curriculum? Because we're pulling them out of class and no, not a substitute for them? Sometimes, but there's really a few key individuals and it's also outside their contractual hours if it's in stipends. So if there's a social studies stipend for curriculum work, that person is doing extra work outside of the contract a day. That's built into it. That's why it's important to fill those positions. And then when they go to small groups that usually one leader, and this is a, a, a model that it happens for a lot of things. You send someone out, Marsha will be going out for training on a, a, a specific topic. She's going to come back and she's going to train her entire team. And then she's going to train, you know, teachers and she's going to train paraprofessionals and we're only we're paying for the trainer. If we sent every other person out, it would cost us thousands and thousands of dollars. It's that type of model that we're really implementing to, to achieve our greater goals. You know, some of this money going to uh, professional development days, you know, when the sure. staff has a professional mm -hmm. development day, what do they do? Do we have money to provide them with a speaker or Sometimes a it's a, or correct. So so sometimes it's bringing the program in. Last year, Center School had a two-day math workshop, and it was expensive. Um, sometimes we'll, our professional days are strictly run internally uh, by our staff. Sometimes it's by administrators. Sometimes it's by uh, uh, you know, teachers. Sometimes it's and sometimes it's run in teams, and they're working on things together. But this allows you to do that stuff. But it seems to be that that particular account is is receding each year. Correct. At one time, we're probably we're spending a hundred thousand dollars in that account. That goes to seventy-five, and sixty, and then fifty. And that year is forty. Well, in two thousand sixteen, was forty-four, right? Was in the forties. We did, we, about did, about we did increase it in 17-18, but I don't remember what the number was the year before that. Didn't you say it was 40-something, mm -hmm. you think, in, when you started the workshop? So no, no, no 40, I'm looking at 17-18, where I had 20,000 from support. Oh, okay. That's where I'm getting my 40. Right, yeah. I think it was 44. No, no, he's adding here in this no, column 16. two years ago. Not, right. not so two years, years, years ago, we were in Right, and next year what I'm comparing the 42 is um, 7,500 plus 2,500, uh, 10,000 is 20, 23,000. What I'm saying is professional development for staff, you know, even though they have a bachelor's or master's degree and, and have been teaching for a number of years, just keep current with current educational philosophy and things that are being done, is this going to do it? That's the program we're drawing off of. We're, it feels not saying that we couldn't use more money if we had. Yeah. <laughs> He's saying that. Well, I'm being, are, is that kind of what your question no. is? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, we are not providing the same money today that we provided Last two or three years ago, and. That creates a problem in my mind. Right. And whether we're providing be an adequate, more than adequate, really, professional development 
budget or program for, for our staff. That'll be part of our long-term planning for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think we've been thrifty for a lot of years. Just to put it in context of what are we talking about bringing the program in, when you bring in a, a program for a day, $4,000 is a fair number for a full day workshop from an outside provider. Some of them charge as much as ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 for a day. Um, we have, at my school, we've done webinars. And again, that requires some creative way of doing it because they will charge you so much per person who's going to attend the webinar. And we've used the contractual hours of the school to uh, to do professional development that way. And it's done as a group, so you have an expert on a, as a, on a webinar, and then the staff collaborates and works together. So they're also nowadays, you know, more, uh, you know, less expensive options. Sure. Right, and that's what we're trying for. Yeah. But still targeting. I would say that our administration and staff uh, can't be creative, really. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they are. But there's still a lot going on outside there. Education is changing so much, and you have to keep current. And this is one way of doing it. You don't do it this way, then you have to be very creative. Yeah. You can only be creative so long. One of the things, one of the ways this money was used this current year, we're we're doing book studies. It's it's but they can they don't have to do it. It's totally by choice. We put out three books, and the administrators are writing book book groups. We bought the books for them. If they're going to read them and they're going to come in and after school hours and have professional conversations, we should buy the books for them. And so that's what we've done. That's the type of professional development where we're, you know, you're, you're having some ongoing learning, you're reading a book, you're sharing with your colleagues. How would that, I apply that to my classroom. That's one of the ways. One of the options we're also trying to be um, creative is, I mean, we are working on the same things that they're working on in Ashford, that are working on in Tom, that we're working on in Mansfield. And so we've, we've talked to Coventry about, hey, could we um, combine some of our dollars to bring this person in? Um, Ken just sent me an email today. He's, he's got someone through ESCON that they're bringing in for the February PD that's already paid for. Could we allow some Ashford folks to come in and you know charge them a, a nominal fee? Those are the, you're trying to be creative with how you're doing your PD. Make your dollars go as far as you can. Okay, so let's move on to program seven utilities. So you have to pay the bills. There's the water prices flat, electricity we left flat, um, heating oil went up a little bit. You can see the price down there, and, and I, I begged Donna to try and get back to the company and see if they'll allow us because you're locked into a price to see if they'll allow us to go down. I doubt they will um, because the price might be a little bit lower than we locked in. But you're always you're always hoping that it, when you lock in, it's the lowest price. It's it's there's no rhyme or reason to it. You look at trends and do what you can do. Um, so it's up 22 cents um, for heating oil and diesel fuel, which is also not in here. It's in transportation. Is also up. Too, so they're about a penny off. The energy performance contract these payments. This is the um, years ago, I think it was about six years ago, the, the town, and I say town because Board of Ed and town received about $600,000 of work from Siemens. There was an agreement and basically what they did is they came in, they replaced the boiler, they did a bunch of spray foam insulation in the schools, uh, they upgraded some valves, they did all of these lights, these are all um, the lights from Siemens. And basically what they did was they said, we'll give you the $600,000 to do it, you're going to pay it back over 17 years, and you will pay it back by the savings you'll see from doing these projects. I will tell you that this is one area for, from my perspective, should not be in our budget. Um, I mentioned this to CIP on Monday night, that any lease payment like this, in my opinion, should be in the capital improvement and not in our operating budget. 
when you lease a truck, it's not in their operating budget. It's in their, it's in their the CIP. And so, I don't, the, the, um, Erica has this in her budget too. I think hers is 14. So, at the, you know, there's $49,000 a year that we're paying right now through that Siemens project still. Um, and it's, we're going to be paying for another 11. I requested that maybe they just do a chunk of change and pay it off at over a couple years and get it out of our operating budget. There's, you have no control over this. And I believe, Don, if I'm correct, this is one of those that continues to increase. It doesn't go down. So now you know how you sometimes you make a payment, you pay more interest and less principal. This is the opposite. This is how I understand it. Yes. So your your dollars are going up every year that you'll be required to pay. Are they providing us any services now, or is this just done. Those services that you mentioned? It's done. Okay. Yes. And it's also done. interest is involved. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. But do we have savings fund? So. <laughs> Great question. Excellent question. It was, there was a service that they provided for the first two years to come in and look at our bills and make sure that there were savings. Um, and then we discovered, I think they were charging 5000 Yes. Around $5,000 in audit to make sure we had savings. At the time, there was savings. And then someone caught wind, and I'm not sure how it happened, that we were paying $5,000 for the audit, and everyone said, hold on. Let's stop the payment for the audit. If we're making, if we have savings, let's just trust that we have savings. Right now, um, and we we're getting ready to meet. Uh, there's a group of us in the town office building that we look at the water usage, we look at the electric the electricity usage, and um, just make sure there's no spikes. And if there there are if there's a spike, we figure out what it is. I think at one point in time, the senior center was also connected to this. And either the AC was stuck on or the heat was stuck on. And their usage went way up. And so we're still the yeah. Pro yes. This might be something that, you know, in a couple of years you pay for just to see if you still have savings, but it's five thousand dollars that I mean you have to prove that you're not seeing savings. I don't know how you do that now. This is Predates me. Now, where is MCOR in the budget? Because aren't we using MCOR somehow in some way? Or MCOR is in the um, schools, Within into the schools program right? one and two. Okay. Yes. And they seem to be doing it doing a much better job of maintaining the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah their so. MCOR has been fantastic. Okay. Well. But the increase you see here is really, it's contractual. I mean, you yeah. get your bill. I mean, this is where you hope you're, you have a, a really warm winter and you don't have to use as much heating oil. Um, it's kind of like the snow budget for the town. If you don't have a lot of snow, you save money on the snow budget. But now that she brought it up, it kind of, the MCOR doesn't do the utilities or the no. So Correct. that's not separate. It's more maintenance. Right, more maintenance. Okay. But we have zero in the request for this year for MCOR, right? On that, we just moved where it was. Okay. So when you look at um, the program eight, I think it's program eight. Yes, yeah. program eight, which is is that next? That's what I'm. Oh, that's not tonight. Okay. Um, but it's it's in it's in the schools now. If okay. the price is there, we just took it out because it's it's the contract for the school. We wanted to see which piece of MCOR was going to hall and which piece was going to center because of the different ages of the buildings. We needed mm -hmm. to separate it into those two. Okay. Okay. No further questions on utilities. Let's move on to our last program that we're going to cover tonight, program 10, fringe benefits and substitutes. Is it 9 or 10? Uh, no, just 10 to no. <laughs> no. No. Right. No. no. That's next week. It's going to be a 7 and skip day. Oh, my schedule said 9 and 10. I'm just looking at today's agenda, unless it's some difference from what was under originally. Oh, uh, it's supposed to be 9 and 10 on the program. Okay, then I'm okay, happy to backtrack. Oh, it's a special meeting. We can't cover it because we cannot adjust the agendas on special meeting nights. Right. Thank you. We will be at program nine. My parliamentarians nice. keep me on to our yeah. so nine we'll add, We will add program nine to next week. But for tonight, our last option before we go into discussion and public presentation week is program 10. Sorry about that. benefits and substitutes. Okay. 
my least favorite area to talk about. And honestly, um, substitute sits in there, it went up. Donna and, and uh, I went through and just talked about what's a more accurate number based upon usage. That is a more accurate number instead of leaving it flat. The thing to remember about this too is that if you have a teacher go out on leave and you have to hire a long-term sub, you're paying the teacher, you're also paying the long-term sub and that comes out of this account. We've had two so far this year and so it's, it, it gets expensive. If they're over 40 days, it's bachelor's <coughs> um, pay. It's yes. not sub pay. Mm -hmm. But it comes out of this line. It comes out of this line. Didn't we talk at some point that we're going to increase the per diem for substitute teachers? Or we already have? We already have. And what is it now? 85. Uh, if, if you're a retired teacher, it's a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, and we're actually, we posted on Indeed this year. I think we're in better shape for something than we've been in a long time. So, and they're, and I'm, they're good subs. I know, not good, they're not good. Are a lot of people taking advantage of the retired? Oh, there's a few. There's a few. And Some people just go, done. I'm done. You know, they don't want. So you don't have a substitute problem? At this point, we have in the past. But every time we post on a deed, we pick up somebody else. And our subs like us a lot. And we picked up actually a sub or two through them talking. It's because they know each other from other districts. They sub in other districts, but they're coming here because they like our district. We have great staff. So um, sub per professionals, we left flat because it's, it's, it's a good number. So here's your contractual numbers. The medical insurance, dental insurance, life insurance, that is um, the increase that we know right now is the number we put in is 14.5. We were told it won't be over 14.5%. When you do the math from the 1 million, uh, from 1819, 1, 1, to 1,190,000, it is more than 14%. We know that. It's because there's a change in benefits. And the number that was budgeted, now the number that we're budgeting for is the number that we know, based upon the current pool of staff that we have, will be taking insurance. So it's not that it's we missed the math, if that makes sense. That we're comparing now. <coughs> Correct. So why, what kind of changes were there? Well, if you didn't take insurance last year, and next year you're going to, oh, oh, okay. there's an increase. Oh, yeah. So it's not just the 14.5 we're banking on. And we hope that 14.5 comes down, but we, will, we don't know. Dental insurance, same thing, and life insurance, same thing. And those are all contractual, and they are a big chunk of your budget. Um, unemployment is 6000 at this point. Kerma went up, that's our, our the workers' comp. Social, Social Security is, is relatively flat, it's still 140. Tuition reimbursement is contractual. And we put out a survey, and we've had people say next year that they are, uh, could be taking classes. And it's beyond your master's. So if they take the classes and they're in a program and it's a, approved by me, then they get a, a, I think it's up to $800 a year. Is that contractual? Yes, it is. It's contractual. <laughs> I think it's $800 a year. But it's, it's, it is contract. Whatever the you know, contractual. It doesn't pay for the whole class. Correct. No, it, does no. not, <laughs> it does not pay for the whole class. Um, <coughs> teacher's Retirement Board that you see there, uh, so yes, Teacher's Retirement is now zero. That was an old uh, contractual piece in the administrator's contract, and Holly was the last person to have that, and now it's out. So that is zero and will remain zero. And the tax sheltered annuity is uh, contractual for a couple contracts, including mine, and that's the number. You see the subtotal there, um, and it's up two hundred thousand dollars. And the majority of that two hundred thousand dollars is in in the insurances. Questions about benefits themselves? Okay, the unemployment employment compensation. Um, what? Do we use that 6000 over the years? Is that about how much it averages? Donna. 
Because we haven't designated positions last year. But we, right now, in this budget, we have two positions in the meeting. Correct. So should that change? I rely on Donald for that question. Mm -hmm. Yes, <clears throat> yes. If we if we have two claims, then that number is that's not enough money. Okay. Is it going to double this number? Or what what does it pay then? It is a formula from the, the Department of Labor. It's a best. It's a it's a best estimate. Is basically yes. what it is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you use it. Sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. So think. you always put it in, even though we might have not used any last year. Correct. So it might be enough. Like it might not. Okay, depending on what. Okay. Just like that. Now, even though the uh, medical insurance is contractual. And we were allocated one million, one ninety, one hundred ninety thousand for that. Is that an actual figure that we got from the insurance company? Oh yeah. Or is that an estimate? No, that's that is the number for our our current pool to get the insurance that the employees has requested at this point in time. So they have a single, they have you know single plus one or they have um, family. And so based upon our survey and the 14.5% increase, that's where that number is coming from. If the insurance number goes down, then this number goes down. It's 14%. Huh? 14% increase. Yeah. I was talking to a superintendent in a different town, and she had a 30% increase. It entirely depends on your usage, um, and we're out. I mean, we're out today. We're trying to bring it down. Uh, this is something to remember, though, is that if this comes down to ten percent, you're not saving. What are you saving? Four thousand dollars. I mean, it's not. It's not. You're not saving thousands and thousands of dollars. I think that this came down to five. It was like twenty thousand that we were saving. If I'm correct. Yes. So. I know at Region 19 is single digit, low single digit, the insurance, but they're telling me because I was like, wow, how low it can be. And it said that the whole pool, years over years, they've always used the same insurer, and they have a very good record. That's yeah. why it's so much lower. So it only takes, and especially, we've looked at a lot of options here. We've looked at going out into another smaller group. Um, that's because their insurance costs are astronomical. Um, and to do an RFP would have cost us, I think it was $5,000 or more. Um, and after the RFP, you might decide to drop out. And that would mean they'd have to do another RFP. There's no way that we can afford that to do. To, we, we figured let's let them get established. If it works for them, we'll see. We've looked at the state plan, trying to figure out their savings in the state plan, but entirely, it entirely, you know, relies on your pool. If you have a bad year, if you have, you know, a couple people or you know, two or three in a small pool, yeah, a small, it, it, your costs go up, and a lot of people have, have talked positively about the state plan. I'm, and I've heard mixed reviews, but as soon as people, if, if we left and we went to the state plan. We're bringing poor experience to the state plan. Well, if people are leaving their plans to go for a cheaper plan, why are they doing it? Because their costs are high. Well, if their costs are high, it's because things are not going well. So eventually, that all of these plans are going to get washed out because the state plan, you know, will bring a lot of bad cases. Is how I'll say it. So there's there's nothing you can do um, other than Look for you know small increases. Hope that your you know your pool improves, and you know continually go out to bid. And some companies won't even look at you, depending on your experience. Fair statement. I think we had two last year. 
that look that are, are cool. Kinetic and Sigma tend to be the two babies and everybody else is nothing. So maybe blue cross. Questions about health insurance? I would love a single thing to increase. <laughs> okay, so we have um, um, still time if there are questions or discussions or anything on any of the topics we've covered so far today. Is there any? We still, of course, have next week. There will be time for more discussion. And once we've seen all the different parts of the budget, there are still some parts of the budget we have not yet looked at. Um, we will have a chance for everyone on the board to speak, as well as anyone in the audience. So if there's anything that you want to say, or if there are questions or anything else carried over from an earlier section of that you have that would help. Did the board finance give us, send us a letter? Mm -hmm. Was it a flat? No, zero. A zero percentage increase. Right. That's not really flat because we have other increases that are contractual that we have no. It's, it, it would keep the number flat. But flat that, services would be like flat services. Flat services is, is not the same as a number. And we're about 2.94. With this current. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back to the audience. For those of you who are... Um, I just first? wait for one second. I want to make sure, I just want to ask a question, because as you go for next meeting, yeah. you'll have Program 8 and Program 9. We had on the calendar capital improvement plan request. Have you had enough of that? <laughs> it was on our calendar, and I feel like I've talked about that a lot of times. Do we need to bring yeah, it back up? I know. The only question would be, is that Siemens going on? Is it on there already? It's, no. it, it's not on there yet, but I just presented it in uh, uh, Steph and I talked today. And, uh, it might be good for me to do a follow-up with them if possible. Yeah. Okay. So, but I, don't, I didn't want to put it on the agenda if, if you don't want to hear anything about it anymore. <laughs> I think you've heard a, a lot about it. So I will, I, if, yeah, unless you say you otherwise, would I will add, leave it off. If you would add section program 9 yep. to next week and make sure we have um, mm -hmm. time for the yes. discussion. Yep. Have you done 8? You'll have 8 and 9 eight next week. Okay. And I will take off capital improvement plan requests and we'll put on the agenda follow-up requests from any of the programs. And if you have any other questions, you can send them to me and I'll make sure it's on the agenda. Can I ask another question? Or? about the grand list. Sure. It's not uh, yeah. but is the grand list is the grand list going up or down? Last year it went down. Correct. Is it going down again? I don't know. I, I can find out for you. So they they have the figures on that? Yes. Somewhere. I believe they have the figures. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> I really need that round table. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fatigue today. One thing though, I was I, I did see a list of 14 towns that are considered red zone towns for Cromwell Foundations and what their mill rates are, and we are the lowest mill rate, and there it's 14 towns around here, um, except for Summers, which has prison pilot money you know, at the Yin Yang. And we're even lower than Mansfield, which surprised me. Not very high, very much, but because they also have pile of money. Um, so I was just, even though we had that increase, was it three years ago? Two years, yeah. two years ago, we well, went up three, two and a half or something. Yeah. four. Yeah. Well, well, my We're up about two hours. Yeah. So if there are any questions like that that you want additional information from Phil or from Donna ahead of time, it helps to give them a little bit of notice um, to give them. So um, feel free to email Phil if you have requests for additional information like that. That would be useful. When we process at the next meeting, it's just a presentation. We're going to discuss it.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.
we'll see what we can find. So just having those three budgets, the current one that we're talking about, you're making mm -hmm. a decision on, and then the last two years, actual ones. So when you look at my budget proposal, it has the last two years in it. Right. Awesome. So you'll see 17, 18, 18, 19, and then my proposed. So you really only need the one document because all the information is up in one. Great. Is that enough? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then secondly, so I don't know that much about financing, but, but there's some 25% of our entire budget goes to special education. Is that the norm for across the state of Connecticut for all school districts like Simsbury? My, my last two districts were Tullum and Simsbury, but I didn't really pay attention. It just seemed like over $2 million going to special ed on an $8 million budget. Is that typical of I would say it's not unusual. The difference is with small districts, sometimes you have a sample size. Some years it's higher and some years it's lower, depending upon which kids are in your school district. It's a little more stable in larger districts. Could I just add a piece of that is de I'm the director of people services. So that is definitely an area that all school districts really do struggle with, is that, that high rate. And it's something that the state of Connecticut, and I know there's a work group especially down in the Norwich area where a lot of stakeholders have been getting together to try to address that area because the costs of special education are certainly on the rise. And if you go to our website, it's actually under, um, mm -hmm. there's a Board of Education link that brings you to budget and you can see that that's actually three budgets that are on there. Although he's looking on his phone, so it's not going to look the same if you look under your laptop. Right, under there. And May I have a sure. And since you are new to a small town like this, what I think you have to keep in mind is that, um, for example, for a number of staff of certified or teachers, um, when you have only two rooms on a special room on a grade, you have much less flexibility than if you have five classrooms for that one grade. So bigger districts, they can manage their staff and their, the number of students per class won't change as much year over year. Well, here, if you've got one class, one teacher, your numbers go sky high. So a small district has those kind of constraints that other districts you know, manage better. Students at all school now, right? Do you have kids at all school now? I do, too. Mm -hmm. They just came in December. Making the third world of I know you are now. <laughs> I have this. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from the audience? We'd love to hear from you. Okay. Uh, I was just kind of curious about the, because I, I got here late, sorry. It's okay. Of course, concert next yeah. door. <laughs> but I was just curious about. Um, the elimination of the enrichment specialist position. I don't, I'm not really sure how much, um, or do we have other specialists for enrichment there, or how much, what kind of impact are we looking at in terms of, you know, for the kids? Just, are there certain programs going to be removed? I'm not sure what that, what that position specifically does. I'm just curious to you know about that. So that's probably a, bigger question because um, there are um, a lot of specialties that a full-time teacher would partake in. Mm -hmm. Could one or two of those possibly be picked up as an after-school club? I don't think so, but you know, it's, it's hard to say exactly how. It, it would mean this budget that's here that we're looking at proposes cutting two full-time certified staff from Hall School. Correct, yeah. And from a small staff that's a big okay. hit. But they're both, in both cases, they are not classroom teachers. So we prioritize, um, Phil has told us that he prioritized keeping class sizes small. Mm -hmm. yep. And therefore, the only options are then to reduce the salary line. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. One of the things we will be discussing over the next uh, budget meetings here is, is that something that we want to vote to put back into this budget before it goes to the Board of Finance? Um, we're already at 3%, 3% higher than, than the number they wanted us to come in at, okay. but many people at this table expressed um, great distress at those potential cuts. Okay. So we'll be having that conversation, so if 
you know, I'm, I don't, you said you were over here, so maybe your kids aren't at home school. Well, yet. I have one here. Oh, you do have one at home school. school. Okay. So there are. Um, maybe we'll have a little bit more conversation about exactly what would be put okay. um, at a future meeting. Yeah. So we'll answer that question in greater detail okay. next week too. But Michelle, could you yeah. just take off the, the things that fall under, um, or could fill fall under the that position? If, if part of the question is what's the impact? What well, we talked about it last. Week. It's really the it's the integration of of, of any of those things. Mm -hmm. and, and when you see the tour, you're gonna, you'll, you'll see this. It's the integration of special assignments, projects with the curriculum. That's the, really the role of that person. And so, you know, with the hands-on, the Lego space, it's the you know they can, they're pulling out paints in that room. They have a three D printer, mm -hmm. um, a maker uh, space with the tools. They have the tools out. So that integration gets yeah. uh, hopefully soaked up by a professional, mm -hmm. but it's really going to be the teacher, a, a classroom teacher driving that versus a specialist driving that. Mm -hmm. Barbara so, Benares, did you see? No, I was going to have her sign in after. Barbara oh, Benares said it. It's the address. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Tell her your address so she can put it. Oh, she has to Well, I'm going to need to know how to spell your last name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. G O L G O U N A R I S. And just sign it for us. I will do this thing. Yeah. Okay. So, um, seeing no further questions, we still have more to do next week, but I would like to give the board an opportunity. We do present to speak and board comments at the end of every meeting, and since we're also present to speak and are also citizens, if there's anything that you want to address or put forth, I'd like to give you a chance to have your final word before we go on. Let's start her? No. Okay. Tracy? Mm. It's just, it's just very frustrating that because our, because our business is people, in the Board of Education, we do not have income. We're not spending on luxury items or large equipment. It's people. And that cost increase for insurance for people to provide quality education to our students is also now causing us to eliminate people from our, from our system that are quality. We've worked hard to get, you know, Phil said last week the the um, gifted that position we have a really high quality person we're not going to get her back we cut that position we take away that space they're not going to say oh in a couple of years when we make changes in the district perhaps we can bring that person back we're going to have to find somebody else and it may not be the same quality and it's going to impact our students so it's just frustrating that. We're being asked to come in at a zero percent budget, except we can't keep the same quality by doing that because we're not buying anything extra. <laughs> we're eliminating things. And step not for me today. Thank you again. We're all storing up our our thoughts to hold on to them. <laughs> Take notes so you don't forget by next week. We don't want you to forget. Okay, so um, I'll take a motion to adjourn our meeting. I move we adjourn the meeting. Okay, and a second. Second. Okay. And we don't have to vote on that. So moved. Meeting is adjourned at eight. No, seven forty-five.